Reminder that we are collecting donations for the medical needs of Eric Penner and family. Eric Penner has had surgery and removed both kidneys. I believe now he's going into dialysis. Uh, he'll be doing dialysis for a while as they try to get the impurities out of his body. And they're still waiting for a kidney that can be uh, transplanted there. So let's keep that in prayer. Also, uh, there is in back a jar if you want to give to the uh, the federal benefit fund, either write a check or or I think cash, put it in there, and then I will be collecting those and then heading to the bank. It's down at Verizon Bank in Devil's Lake, and that's where that benefit fund is is set up. Today, just so that you're aware, because I know that many of you have already given today, uh, today, uh, along with other things that have happened around the state, I believe. We have, I haven't checked yet, but I believe we have around $10,000 in there. So God has been very gracious. Uh, so anyway, just so that you're aware that um, that's that still ongoing. And we'll be ongoing um, for a while because even though their insurance is paying for a lot of that, there's going to be other expenses that they need to deal with. So we want to be uh, available for that and help them as we can. All right, yes, ma'am. There's a sign-up sheet for the other Lent Sundays that are Wednesdays that will be here okay. for soup and sandwich. So there's a sign-up sheet to do that. Yeah, so feel free to sign up in the back. Uh, the soup last time, the soup was great. Mm -hmm. well, one actually I thought it was awesome. Anyway, uh, we'll be uh, signing up in the back for that. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, one more thing. Uh, next week, we're baptizing. Eric Riley. So we'll see you guys on Sunday. And we'll do that here. Okay. Anything else? Alright. If there's nothing else, I'm going to please rise. And we're going to sing Blessed Be Your Name is on page 27. Page 27. Oh, 
Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll continue our service and stand in the For then 
you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Here is the reading of the first lesson. Psalm this morning is taken from Psalm 119, starts on page 273. We're going to read the verses 9 through 16. How shall a young man cleanse his way by keeping to your words? With my, With my whole heart I seek thee. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. Bless are you, O Lord, instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite all the judgments of your law. I have taken great, great delight in the way of your decrees that in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word.
And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be God, saying, For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to Jesus. The gospel of our Lord. You may be seen. That he knew was coming. 
He knew that he was going to face the enemy. He knew that he was in a battle to free humanity. And so he knew that he had to prepare for that battle. He had to prepare. And how did he prepare? Well, while he was fasting, he prepared, I believe, by meditating on the Word of God. Focusing on what the Word of God said, thinking about it, getting deep within him, speaking it out, praying it back to his Father. He was, in fact, meditating on the Word of God. That is the preparation that's necessary if we're going to fight the enemy and win. That's what's needed. He had as his focus God's Word. And by the way, that makes perfect sense. You know why? Because next week when we talk about the tactics of the enemy, we'll find that when he showed up to tempt Adam and Eve, what was the first thing he did? He accused God of being a liar and that his word wasn't true. And Adam and Eve had lost focus on the word of God. And they were open to the attack. And I want you to see that in Joshua, God tells Joshua, who's about to go into battle for the people of Israel, he tells him that before he goes over to Jordan, before they go into the promised land, before they fight the Canaanites, there's one thing he needs to do. And you know what that is? He says this, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, being careful to observe all that is written in this law, and then shall you make your way prosperous, and then shall you have great success. He's saying to Joshua, look, I'm sending you into the promised land. You're going to have to fight for what I promised for. And if you will meditate on the word, if you'll think about it, speak it out, focus on it, and do it, you'll prosper. You will receive all the activity. You'll enter in and you'll have it all. But if you don't meditate on it, you're not prepared. And you'll lose. And we find in the book of Joshua that when they fail to meditate on the word or seek God, this is what happened to them. They lost. Bad. Jesus is our Joshua who leads up in the promised land of heaven and eternal life. He leads us in victory. And what we find in Jesus is that he was going to have a fight with the enemy and therefore while he was fasting he prepared himself for the battle by meditating on the word of God as Joshua was commanded to. Now let me say right now, we're told in Ephesians chapter 6 that our enemy is not flesh and blood, but the powers, the principalities, the rulers, and the dark spiritual forces of the heavenly places. We are at war with the kingdom of Satan. And that means that we're told that we are to put on the whole armor of God so that we can stand when the evil day comes. The evil day will come for each moment. We will have to fight. The question is, will you stand? And the way we stand is we put on the armor of God. How do we put on the armor of God? By meditating on the Word. That prepares us for the victory that will come. It's His Word that we stand on. You see, the devil is very clever. And if you decide you're going to fight him with your own wisdom, you lost. But if you fight him with the word of God, he has no answer for God. That's why you need to meditate on the word. It's how you put on the armor of God and are prepared to win the victory. So in this period of time, 
where a lot of people are fasting and seeking God, what we need to understand is that fasting is part of spiritual warfare. And that means that we need to be doing something other than just not having a meal. We need to spend the time preparing for the battle that will come. Not might come. Will come. And that means we need to meditate on the Word. Because if we're not meditating on the Word and we don't know what God says, then we don't have the weapon we need. And God wants us to prepare for the battle. Not just go in without any preparation. What military commander is going to send his army into battle without making sure that they've been through boot camp and been drilled? What fire department is going to send their firemen into a fire unless they have been trained? What the Holy Spirit is saying to us today is that you are at war with the enemy. And one way that we overcome Satan is through fasting and meditating on the Word, so that when the battle comes, we are ready to apply the Word that God has for us in that situation. Because it is God who will do the battle, but we are the ones who utter the Word. So today, let me say to each and every one of you, during this lab, as many of you fast, remember what you're involved with. You're involved in spiritual warfare. And that means that the evil day is coming. Expect it. You're going to have a fight on your hands. But it's a fight you can win if you will prepare. And you prepare not by meditating on the news, not by meditating on on, on your own ideas, but meditating on what God's Word says and getting it deep within you and praying that out and focusing on what God has done for you through the cross and the resurrection and the promise of that to all of us and to all the saints. Now, next week, we'll talk about the tactics of the enemy. If you're going to fight the enemy, then you need to know how he operates so that you will not be taken by surprise. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you have laid out the course of victory for your people. Lord, just as Joshua meditated on the word and overcame, just as our Lord Jesus meditated on the word and overcame, so you have called us to meditate on the Word of God, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, that the enemy may flee, that we may have victory over him. Lord, in this time of Lent, as we focus on you more and more, we ask you to give us grace, not only to read your Word, but to understand your Word. And as we meditate on your Word, we pray, Lord, that you would grant to us revelation and transformation of our hearts so that we may walk truly in the faith of Jesus and have victory. And we ask this in Jesus' name, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. All right, we're going to sing our next hymn, and that's found in your folder.
and all of our people, that there would be a turning to you and a time for salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, you've commanded us to pray for the people of Israel. Let now be the time when they recognize you, the one who they pierced, born over you as for an only son, and are cleansed by your blood, filled with your spirit, and joined in your church as the one who man. Be with your church in Israel and in Jerusalem, that they would preach your word with power while you lift up your hands and heal with miracles, wonders, and signs of heaven. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on the wailing wall on the old city of Jerusalem. Bring divine revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And let the people of Israel cry out, Blessed is he, Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, You're hear right. our prayers. Lord Jesus, you are the healer. And by your stripes, we are healed. Thank you for that. Lord, we pray to heal the name you purchase on Calvary's Hill. In the Garrett Manor, I'm in supply. Mohini Yoda, Roger Rollis, Doug Sari, Darla Dahl, Rose Winkler, Linda Winkler, Tim Hennessy, Ken Hansen, Cooper Park, Brian Alden, Jeremiah Swall, Judy Matheson, Jim Gresham, Jack DeMaine, Helen Beck, Doris Michaelbus, uh, Kim McKay, Arlo Madden, Jack Michaelbus, Lord, we pray your blessing in your military personnel. Rosie Neese, David Byrne, Sammy Neese, Riley Legacy, and Harvey Hanklin. And we pray your blessing on all those we mention now in our out or in our hearts. Just pray for our brothers and sisters at Gilgit, Andrea Sandstreet, our brothers and sisters in Nicaragua, and all of our families, that, uh, members of our family that are on our hearts and minds. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Hey, eat. This is my body. Give it for you. Do this for the remembrance of it. Again, after suffering, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of 
And as we are his disciples on earth, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Body of Christ. Bye. 
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant that you may keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, peace, serve the crucified and risen Lord. Thank Thanks you. be to God. Uh, we're going to sing our last hymn, it's 499 in the Lutheran Book of Worship.